Well, hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel and Grizzly Bear Farms here. We are back on Goldcrest Valley, and this is going to be episode number 25, uh, which you will watch on Christmas Eve. How exciting is that? So this is going to basically be um, probably the last day of our fall season that you're going to see, even though it says mid-autumn. Uh, as I was pointing out in episode number 24, um, I did not plan to do it this way. It just so happened that it coincided with real-time Christmas time and so I'm going to do a Christmas special which will be a, a completely different episode that will take place here on Goldcrest Valley. Uh, it's not going to really be much about farming um, although I think it'll be uh, cool nonetheless. And um, so today I think in all total if we pull up our little map here we have pretty much harvested about 20 fields um, over the course of this year, this season, from you know, spring into uh, into where we are now, mid-autumn. Um, everything that you kind of see there that is green uh, are the fields that we own, and I think my count was about 20. We are down to our very last field, and it's field number 11, which is a canola uh, field that we need to get up and get that in and so that's what we're going to do here um, the boys are all busy working um, they're cultivating in the oilseed radish on different fields that we had planted that on um, to facilitate with our fertilization uh, needs trying to be as green as possible so we opted uh, to do that for the majority of our fields we didn't uh, we didn't plant oilseed radish on on a hundred percent of them just mainly because well we ran out of time we had so many other things that we needed to do as well on our farm and so um, that is just that so our our sheep are doing well um, I spent a few minutes this morning just sort of tending to the animals and getting them uh, making sure that they're all um, good to go and that they're <coughs> excuse me that their cleanliness levels are at the max because that's what we've got to do to keep all of that going try not to knock out that speed limit sign there and so yeah we are back over here on field number 11 uh, by the uh, by the rail yard and we're going to um, we're going to basically harvest this field ourselves. Uh, again I said the boys are all busy and so uh, we will let them carry on with what they need to do because uh, we need to get those fields cultivated in because once uh, once winter gets uh, gets uh, set in here in Colorado, this ground becomes uh, hard as a rock, and um, yeah, good luck trying to get uh, get a uh, cultivator to to break in that soil. Oh, it'll happen. It it would work, but uh, we try not to try not to do that. So let's go ahead and get our cultivator here fired up and running. And again, we're going to do this ourselves because well because we can and, um, and because it needs to be done. We need to get this done because this is basically the last of the, this is the last of the Mohicans right here. This is the last field. Um, so once we get it done, we will have all of our harvest in and what we will do uh, off camera most likely, oh, that's interesting. Um, most camera off likely is we will plant a few fields in either a winter wheat or a winter uh, barley or maybe even winter canola. Maybe maybe we'll do one of all three. Um, typically your winter harvest, and again, as I sort of explained this way back when I first started the season, seasonal approach to Farm Sim 17, I sort of said that you know, this wasn't going to be specific to, say, for example, Colorado, which is sort of where I envision um, this um, this map taking place. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not specific to any um, any other region. I sort of took some information uh, from multiple sources and multiple sources here in the U.S. Uh, looked at uh, agricultural information from, say, for example, uh, 
University of Oklahoma, um, and some information from the state of Kansas, state of Texas, um, even looked at some information for eastern Colorado, uh, where most of this type of farming takes place. Uh, to my knowledge, here in the greater Denver area, and I'm sort of referring to the front range, so everything from, you know, um, up and down the I-25 corridor, which is kind of what's considered to be the front range uh, area. While there is various types of farming, everything from um, you know, corn, probably for uh, feed purposes and such, um, Maybe there's some wheat, I don't know, um, but I know that any time that you can, you're in the proximity where you can see the mountains sort of as what we're able to see them uh, here in Goldcrest Valley, uh, this area, pretty much all the farming is done by uh, probably uh, late October or so. I mean, I think there's some, there's some cornfields that are sort of planted for corn mazes and such as that. I don't know what they do with those uh, after, sort of after Halloween. That's kind of a, that's kind of a big Halloween thing is um, doing uh, the corn maze and stuff like that. But anyway, um, out on the eastern, out in eastern Colorado, especially southeastern Colorado, sort of near the uh, Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas border area, um, there's a lot of big time farming going out there. There's a lot of big time ranching. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cattle uh, feedlots and that sort of stuff out that direction. And um, so yeah. So by now, if and if uh, this episode actually does air on Christmas Eve, and I'm pretty sure that it will, um, I certainly hope you've got all your Christmas shopping done, but usually because I put these out early in the morning, uh, at least um, early in the morning North America time, uh, you do still have time to get out there to the mall if you want to be that guy, um, or one of those guys. I've been that guy before where I do the majority of my Christmas shopping um, on Christmas Eve, and um, you know you got to do what you got to do, right? But hopefully, uh, hopefully you've been prepared. And I have no idea what that row of stuff there is. Again, those are sort of the anomalies that I see on this map. I saw similar stuff in 15. Um, thought in 15 it was. Uh, it was soil, it was a soil mod, um, but to be honest, the map that I saw it on was on Stevie's uh, Paradise Hills. Here, I'm best I'm sort of thinking is it's the growth manager maybe, but again, sort of as I said before, the growth manager is such an awesome mod that I really don't want to disable it. Because I sort of need it for the storyline and for how we handle our growth uh, here on our map. And so, uh, even though only doing seasonal farming on Goldcrest Valley, uh, any future maps that I do uh, will also involve the growth manager and be seasonal as well. Just because, um, well, I kind of regret I kind of regret not doing that with um, old streams, but far enough along with old streams that it doesn't really, I don't think it makes sense to put the uh, growth manager in and sort of disrupt what's going on there. Uh, old streams most likely will wrap up at some point whenever uh, another map comes along. I have pretty much at this point, I've pretty much um, decided against doing at least single player coverage of, of uh, Chellington just because there's so many other people that's doing it that I think that, um, you know, while we all have a different, we all have a different approach to our virtual farming endeavors. Um, so there's, you know, like myself and Eustace Farmer, for example, 
uh, can do both old streams and it would be quite different because we have different styles, we have different you know ways of doing things. Um, same with um, at one time, Reefy 1952 and I was both doing uh, Paradise Hills, but and, and both doing the exact same map, Stevie's version of Paradise Hills, and yet it was completely you know completely different with kind of what we were doing, and, and you're not going to necessarily see the same stuff if you watch both of our, our channels, and I hope you do. So, <clears throat> there's a couple of maps that I've seen being previewed on YouTube as well as what I've read about on some of the forums and so those are some of the things or a couple of the examples that I'm sort of looking forward to when they release. Uh, we'll just have to kind of see. about it is is there are a lot of awesome maps out there and if you are um, you know if you're interested in playing something that's maybe somewhat unique um, check out um, check out multi Mikey one two three his channel you'll find him in my um, recommended channels list multi Mikey one two three is um, the newest uh, partner to the Three Dudes Gaming Network, and MultiMikey123 does um, a lot of map reviews, um, where he'll spend about 20 to 30 minutes or so, I think, sort of average, uh, exposing the map and talking about the startup equipment and uh, sort of showing you the startup fields that you get, and of course you can customize all that, and as I've, as I've said before, um, there's no right or wrong way to uh, play these maps. Uh, you can um, you know, play in what I call career mode or, or, or starving farmer mode, where you start off with whatever the map designer has given you, and even some guys sell off pretty much everything and, and, um, and even downgrade some of their equipment in some cases. Um, you can do that, or you can sort of take the approach like I sort of do with some of my maps and start off more as an established uh, type farmer, an established operation where you know I've I've been I've been in the business for some time. I've I've got a lot of the equipment already on hand. I've got sort of the right sized equipment. So in other words, yeah, I'm I'm putting in a little little bit of money in the XML file and maybe uh, purchasing a few more pieces of, uh, uh, of land fields and starting off with a more um, with a more um, accomplished setup but again there is no right or wrong way to do it I'm beginning to think that we will not fill the tank on this combine with this field. So, yeah, it made sense for me to come down here and do this myself, and that way the boys can stay busy doing what they're doing. And of course, I'm really thankful for all their hard work this, this season, this year. They have uh, just done a fantastic job. You know, when we moved here to the, to the valley, really didn't know anybody, and, uh, you know, Mr. Richards, when we bought the farm from him, his only request was that we try to keep the three, three guys busy and keep them working, and we've met that commitment, of course, they darn near blew, blew us all up, but that's worked out for the best, because we were able to redesign our farm, and, and you know, locate our, our dairy, because, you know, our, our dairy, between our dairy and our sheep um, operations, those are where we're making most of our money. Um, you know, we have really yet to sell anything. Um, we did do that work for Mary, uh, Mary's farm, where she needed that corn. So basically, you know, we harvested that cornfield 
and um, put that in our in our grain storage, and then we sold that to Mary. We carried up uh, 100 and I believe it was 118,000 liters of, of corn for her, so that she can continue to run her her business. And so she was very appreciative of that. But that's been the only uh, the only uh, the only crops that we've sold. And um, if we just uh, just quickly pause here and I'll show you what our inventories look like and they're quite impressive uh, I suppose so we've got about 52,000 liters of wheat about 53,000 liters of barley um, 23,000 liters in storage of canola plus whatever this is going to equal 34,000 liters of sunflower 82,000 uh, liters of um, soybeans 23,000 liters of corn. We got a whopping 316,000, almost 317,000 liters of potatoes, and 88,000, um, yeah, 88,204 liters of sugar beet. So those potatoes, um, that was a field that we purchased. Uh, farmer was in hard times and just really did not have. Well, I think you know when you struggle. You know, depression starts to set in, and he was just sort of at the end of his end of his rope, so to speak. And um, he had that field; it was his only field. A lot of his equipment was busted, broken down, and he just kind of wanted to get out of the business. And that's what we've seen from a lot of the farmers around these parts: is um, they're more, you know, they're more in that age group of Mr. Richards, where. They're, they've put in a hard life, a hard, hard life of farming, and you know it's not easy up here, uh, but they may do, and so they've sort of reached a point to where that they just need to um, enjoy the, their, you know, the rest of their life, and hopefully we can get all this in the tank. And are we? Are we? Yes. Yes, just barely 12,300 liters of canola. So let's go ahead and lift our header and shut off. Put our pipe up and go empty. And so what we did was we just made a deal. We purchased that field with the potatoes in it and uh, gave him a good fair price based on what we thought the yield would be. And we're not going to make a whole lot of money out of that deal, but it, it gave us another field. And it was a huge field. Let me tell you, the boys worked um, a couple of days, a couple of days getting those potatoes up. It was just, you know, it was a massive field, much too large for, uh, for potatoes. And we will just go ahead and empty our canola into our tipper here. Good deal, good deal. We will go ahead and move this guy out of the way for now. And we'll come back here and collect it later today. So let's go ahead and get this in storage so that nothing happens to it. Now, if you've been sort of keeping tally on, you know, how much, how much, I haven't done a, I mean, I've done some harvesting on, on, um, on camera. Some of it, I, you know, maybe over 50% we've done off camera just to kind of keep it from becoming too repetitive. Um, but you may have noticed that the yields are, you know, slightly lower maybe than what you might think 
we'd have on some of these fields. And of course that is because none of these fields had been plowed. And so one of the things that we're doing is as we are, um, as we're harvesting these fields this season, we are plowing them. And so that way our yields for next year, uh, of course I haven't, oops, I have not been um, keeping track or anything, but um, they all should be much, much greater uh, next season because we are plowing, as I said before, uh, uh, before we're turning the fields back around. All right, let's, we've got a few more minutes here before um, our time is up. And I think we'll just, uh, we'll just jump in our truck here and we will go down and check on a couple of the boys and see what they're doing. I think they probably need uh, some instruction on what to do next, perhaps. And again, we are going to plant some winter crops. Um, you know, of course, these will become available to harvest in four game days. But um, so that would basically mean uh, sometime. Oops, he is. Uh, I guess he decided to go four wheeling. Um, But we will just ignore that because, you know, again, as I've sort of said before, we are playing a seasonal approach. But, you know, at the same time, there's only there's only so much that we can that we can do. There's only so much that we can make the game itself do for us. And so some of it we just have to ignore. So if we plant if we plant something with the intention of that wheat field, you know, coming basically coming available to us in um, very early summer, whereas normally if you planted something in the spring, um, that wouldn't be available until, you know, either late summer or early fall. Um, what, we're, what we're basically doing is we are planning on, uh, you know, I don't know why I, I'm sorry, let me, uh, I didn't want to do that, I didn't want to stop him. But I keep forgetting to put this um, to put this pickup in my vehicle group switcher. So anyway, um, we are doing some you know some winter crop here, just so that we've got some things to do as far as harvest wise goes uh, sooner rather than than later. Hopefully, you know I'm I'm so hopeful of cattle and crops. And by the way, I uh, just want to remind everyone that you've got um, you know a little over a week left to enter into the cattle and crops giveaway that we're doing over at PCSG. And um, but you know really hoping that cattle and crops gives us the seasonal uh, farming adventures that we all are looking forward to getting from that um, from that game. Um, that is just, um, I think that that's the one thing that everyone is sort of saying that they hope is, um, I'm not sure where Stan is. We'll have to, we'll have to come look for him later. But I think that is, you know, the one thing that, that most everyone is looking forward to the most with cattle and crops is the seasonal stuff. Because I think, you know, from a, from an immersive perspective, um, as far as the equipment goes, as far as the the process, you know, there's that fine line, and I've talked about that before, between you know reality and in in simulated reality, and you know, I think if um, you know if they if they make things just too darn difficult then, you know, that's going to turn a lot of folks off. Um, but I think that, you know, I think Giants has it, has it down with 17, the physics being what they are, much improved and all that stuff. You know, I think Giants is, is near where they need to be. But I think that cattle and crops is going to take that, and I don't know what sort of, um, 
what sort of level of immersion we would see from cattle and crops with regards to the equipment and the operation of that equipment. But what cattle and crops is going to add that I think is that I think everyone is excited about, and hopefully giants will uh, pay attention and they will, with you know, Farm Sim 19, um, would um, incorporate seasonal you know seasonal farming. Um, because I think that's really the thing that is missing because it's just too um, it's just too it's just too repetitive because it's it's just you know as we've talked about before it's sort of spring it's spring summer and fall all sort of wrapped up into you know um, perhaps depending on how you have your crop crop growth and everything set up you know you can you can plant a you can plant a field today uh, simulating spring and you can basically fast forward and harvest that you know um, the very next day if you have it set on fast crop growth and and rinse and repeat and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that at all but I think that you know I think from a visual perspective I think people want to see uh, change in seasons they want to see uh, seasonal um, um, seasonal um, simulation within the game itself that affects how the crops grow and and you know if you're if you're if you're not paying attention and you plant something in um, you know in fall or, or, or too early in the fall then how that would basically might come up and then be be killed off and damaged by uh, by the cold or something I don't know anyway um, we are at our time limit so when we come back, and again, we're going to kind of fast track through the next uh, the next day, day nine season. You're really not going to see anything from day nine. Uh, we're going to come back. The Christmas special will basically um, kick us off for the holiday season. And then when we do come back with a um, with the next episode, it will be uh, the first day of winter, our first day of winter season. And again, as I said, there won't be a whole lot of episodes per game day through winter because all we're really going to be doing is uh, taking care of our animals, probably selling some wool, um, perhaps selling um, selling some of our um, of our um, of our crop uh, because we're you know we're trying to get the best buyers right now. And we're look we're looking at what the local businesses and everything need and we're in conversations with those guys and then of course we may do some uh, equipment strategic equipment purchases some replacements of things uh, such as that uh, you know we may now that we have um, let's just look at our animal inventory here really quick uh, looks like our liquid manure levels are coming up quite nicely almost 200,000 liters of that stuff I'm not sure what our limit is on it but we certainly don't want to have an overflow um, that would not make the wife very happy uh, to see liquid manure coming rolling down off the hill there. But uh, we probably will look into doing a little bit of liquid manure fertilization. So we'll probably pick up some equipment to do that with. Um, and, you know, just kind of try to change things up for the, for the next season. But, of course, winter, we're going we're gonna to at least step through the motions on that because we want to see... Uh, what our levels of hay and straw and grass and and uh, pig feed and stuff like that, how that will sustain us uh, over the next three months um, and even beyond because obviously we're not going to have access to anything that's going to produce um, you know anything for the animals, straw or even uh, even um, the grains for the pigs and stuff until um, until summertime. so, Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, guys, please check out um, both the Three Dudes Gaming Network website, uh, forums, as well as PCSG. You'll find links to those down below the video. And check out those recommended um, uh, guys, Eustace Farmer, Mr. Species 7, TBF Gaming, Multi, Mikey123, Reefy1952, The Bipolar Prophet, and Shawnee B31. Thank you all so much. Um, happy Merry Christmas Eve, and hope you all have a wonderful and very blessed Christmas Day and beyond. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.